What you will need is an angle grinder with a 2436 grit sanding disc, a piece of laminated fiberglass or wood, something to suck or sweep up the dust, some acetone, Gravicol slash Ultra Bond, the catalyst for your Ultra Bond and resin, some fiberglass, peel ply, polyester resin, an aluminium roller, and a paintbrush. So for the purpose of this video, in this particular case there was a hole cut out here and there was a badly glued down piece of fiberglass onto it. It was leaking, wasn't doing a good job. So for the purpose of this video we'll call it how to patch a hole fiberglass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a piece of fiberglass that's the same size as this to cover it and then I'll do a couple of laminations completely over the entire surface area. The reason why I'm going to put the piece of fiberglasses in here is so that I don't want resin to, to seep in and also just to thicken up the area over here. So first we're going to grind it down to raw fiberglass before we start doing it. So what I've done now is I've grinded as far as the grinder can fit in around there and I've just beveled that slightly. So when the piece comes in and we do a, the ultra bond, which is a bonding paste, it can fit in there nicely. And then we'll do the glassing layers over that. We also don't want a sharp edge. Take note that I grinded in there and that's to remove any dirt that it was and to give it a gripping surface. I'll wipe this down with acetone before we insert the section. Okay, so what I've done now is I just cut a piece of fiberglass if you don't have a piece of fiberglass and you're in a boatyard or somewhere nearby, you could just cut a piece. If it's something where you can remove the backing plate, you don't need to use fiberglass, you could use wood, just as a cavity filler. And you want to make sure that it's 100% level with the surface that you're going to do. It's just so that your glass doesn't dip. If you've got access to the, to the back side, that you can remove it afterwards. In my case, I do not have access to the back. So I want to leave the fiberglass in. So I want to make sure that it's fiberglass will never rot. It's something that, that will be there for life. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this piece of wood, drill a hole through it, put it onto there, drill a hole through the fiberglass, and that will hold it in place. Because this is precisely the same size as the hole. So if I just drop it like that, it would fall through. You can alternatively also use a glue gun, a hot glue gun, and do the four corners in place there. Let it set, and then you do your resin. The only problem with glue gun is if you use polyester resin and epoxy resin, they'll both dissolve the, the glue gun compound and then obviously it will fall through. So you'd have to do a section, remove the glue and then do the ends wherever you've left out. So we do it like this, nice and easy. Use Ultra Bond with a nice fast reaction, so we put 3% catalyst. Ultra Bond is a, is a thickened polyester but especially formulated for doing bonding, filling, thick filler, uh, fillings and all of that. Um, it works a lot better than, than, than the resin itself. It's not, as, it's not as brittle as the resin. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it and really a, a really good filling, edging compound or securing something before you gloss over it. We've got a company in South Africa called NCS Resins. I use them or otherwise there's Atlin Chemicals, so if you're in South Africa you can use them. If you're overseas anywhere else, you can ask them for a structural bonding polyester paste. That's what you'd ask them for. Nice, easy to work with, relatively cheap uh, compared to the other stuff. I mean, if you compare it to epoxy bonding paste, you a fifth of the price. And uh, it's really strong, really, really, really strong. I did some test samples and um, that's I can tell you guys why I use it. I've just pre-drilled it and now what this does it allows you to hold on to something and now you can fit your piece of fiberglass in place and it won't fit, fall through. Now this piece of wood will be removed afterwards so I'm just going to do the final little there's a little bit of trimmings that I need to do tiny edges so I'll trim that that it fits perfectly and then I'll ultra bond it in. Make sure to vacuum up any dust and acetone the surface before you apply your Ultra Bond. Then mix the Catalyst and Ultra Bond together. 
So after cleaning everything thoroughly with acetone, we've done three cleans on here so that we can get it nice and clean. We take our Ultra Bond and what I'm going to do is just run it right on the edge there. If you want to avoid grinding, at this stage you could put peel ply over this and give it a coat of resin over the peel ply. That would eliminate you from grinding once it's dry, but I don't mind the grinding. Just going to put my mask, grind out everything again, but I'll also take this opportunity to fill in all those little pin holes and all the holes that I did, they were 2 mil holes, I drilled them to 3 mil so that the edge is clean so that the Ultra Bond can hold nicely onto them so close up all the holes again and then once this is dry we'll grind everything down again and then we'll start our layers of glass I'm gonna put uh, probably three layers on this would be strong enough three layers of 410 gram by axle just taken out the screw out of the stick that was holding that plate up and that's already dried over so I'm just going to grind around the edges, get, a, get away the, the wax off the top and then we'll give it an acetone clean and we'll start laying our layers of glass on. I'm just going to cut some sections of fiberglass now. And so I just took a measurement on there. And then I'll cut one and then I'll lay one over the glass again and I'll just cut a few of them out. What's nice about the bar axle has got these lines that you can see running vertically and horizontally and I just cut along those lines. Be sure to acetone after you grind. So yeah, we've got a polyester resin, um, iso resin, so we've got 300 mils and I'm going to add a 3% because it's quite 3% catalyst because it's quite cold today. And a little mixing stick and just mix that up real good so you've got your fiberglass sections you're gonna wet out the base and then you're gonna do layers on top of each other um, and using your aluminium roller between layers you're gonna try and push excess resin out of it out of the cloth and make sure that you don't leave too many air bubbles Repeat this process for as many layers of fiberglass you'd like to add. In our instance, we use three. Add your layer of peel ply and make sure your peel ply is cut oversized. Try to get the peel ply as level as possible with no air bubbles and give a coat over the entire surface area as this will determine the end product's aesthetics and ensure the wax layer is removed once the peel ply has been removed. So once your polyester is cured and it's dry, you can pull off your peel ply. So let's pull it off. Oh, it looks nice and smooth. She's hard like a rock. So there's your wax layer. The excess resin has come to the surface of the peel ply and we've pulled it off now. You cannot reuse this peel ply, so you gotta chuck it away. So now that it has been done and the peel ply has been removed, we'll be adding some grey flow coat on top of it, as we did in our bulges. So there we've got it. You can see it's 200 mils of flow coat. And I can show you, see it's got quite a thick consistency to it. But yet still flowing, self-leveling. And you see how that finishes nicely off on the stick there? That's the kind of finish, finish you want to try and get on the bills. So we'll go with a 2%. When you're working with flow coat, always good. 2%, one and a half, 2%. It just gives you a little bit more time to work with it. If you put 3% in there, considering this is a very small amount, we could go 3% um, just for that small area. But if you're doing large surface areas, try and get, come down to one and a half percent. So let's go. 
go 3% on this one because it's such a small area and we've got to work slightly fast now we'll mix up and then we'll let Simone do the painting for us so what you want to do is you want it to have two rags one that you have acetone on and the other that is dry so that you can do a motion like that So once it's painted, we pull off our tape. And it's like the hole was never there. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't already and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up because it helps us out a lot. If you would like to support our production and join our amazing patron family and get behind the scenes footage of what we're up to, a link is provided in the description below.